to the Tokes Talks podcast, a space where I give you strategy and tips for entrepreneurship, relationships, and personal development. Happy Wednesday, happy hump day. I hope you're having an amazing week so far. This is week two of our healing series, and today we're going to talk about unlearning. So in the first week, we spoke about the crumble and how when things fall apart, there are some certain responsibilities we have within that mess. It's not a moment for us to just ignore it, brush it to the side, act like it never happened. If we really want to get our healing done well, we need to sit in it, potentially mourn it, look at the hindsight, notice the patterns, the cracks, and see why things fell apart. And this week you're still within that mess this is where you take that mess and with the information you gathered from all of those questions that you asked yourself you you notice the pieces the broken pieces the confusion and the pain and the interesting thing is that at this point we're somewhere near ground zero right maybe not ground zero in our whole lives of course but in that situation that we had been building for whatever amount of time and it falls apart It's like we're back at square one, we're at ground zero, there is all the work we've done has pretty much fallen in front of us and we're looking at this mass of stuff. But one of the benefits of being at ground zero is the fact that you get to decide exactly what it is that you want to build. You're not, you're not doing patchwork, you're not fixing, you're not doing maintenance, it's done, it's dust, it's at the ground, and now you really get the opportunity to decide, what do I want to build? That can seem very scary, but also empowering at the same time, right? Because now you hold this responsibility to heal, to to prepare yourself for a future, and to really do whatever it is that you want to do, to create what you think is worthy to you. And this is really where the unlearning comes in, right? So the next step of our healing journey, this unlearning phase is where you take all of the information you've gathered in the crumble phase and you split it into two piles. You have the keep pile and you have the trash pile. You take the trash and you discard of it. These are the negatives, the things that you never want to do again, the things that you don't care for, the things that maybe in one season seemed important, but they no longer are. And you discard of them through the rubble, right? This is, I keep using this like building, this building analogy, but a lot of this is happening in your head, right? You're seeing the disaster, things are feeling overwhelming and you you have a lot going on in there. So you're trying to sift through what is worth keeping and what isn't worth keeping. A way that I did this that really helped me was journaling. I will forever, forever, forever talk about journaling, probably on my YouTube page. Eventually I'm going to do a whole episode dedicated to the way that I journal because if I didn't have pen and paper to take away these thoughts from my head, I would probably most likely implode and constantly have mental breakdowns because there's just so much stuff going on in there. But when I get it out of my head and put it on paper, when I write it out on paper, it gives me the opportunity to really look at what's going on and see how to organize it and how it makes sense. So this unlearning phase is one that can be done mentally or also can be done physically on paper in this phase like when i'm talking about this healing journey i'm talking about a lot of personal things that you could do for yourself this is not negating the fact that there is a very high importance in having external support this can come in through therapy this can come through speaking with people who you respect and care about And seeking help outside of yourself, that is very important. No man is an island, but for the sake of this series that we're doing, I'm talking about the things that you can do yourself. And even in the midst of doing some of this stuff yourself, you can still seek people, right? Like if you're going through that crumble and like just going back to that, if if you are going through that crumble and you're thinking about the cracks that were in that relationship and you can't see it, maybe you're still too close to it. Maybe there's still denial ask some of the people around you. You'd be surprised what they have to tell you about your relationships or situations you're in once it falls apart. I know that from my past relationship, there was information that I received only after it was done because one, 
people who knew me well knew that I wasn't ready to absorb it in the midst. There was still a lot of denial going on. And two, they might have not felt comfortable because it could seem as if them telling me these things is an affront to my relationship, them letting me know that they don't like the person I'm with. And if I am, or if I was very devoted to that person, that could have been the end of our relationship, you know, or it could have put uh, a crack in the relationship I had with that external party. But now that we're sitting in the rubble, invite some people in, they will offer you perspective and insight into things that you didn't even realize were taking place. I know that also with my past relationship, when I was in the crumble phase and I was looking at things, there were so many issues that I didn't realize were such big deals until I stepped out. And when I stepped out and looked at them and realized that, yo, you were kind of suffering at some points, girl. I spoke to my sister about them and I was telling her all of these stories, stories that she had never heard before. And she said, why didn't you tell me what this was going on? And that really showed me the part of denial, right? Because I didn't tell her while it was going on because even if I didn't want to admit it openly, a part of me knew that if she had that information and I told her, she would force me to hold myself accountable at a level that I wasn't yet ready to do. So I kept it close to the chest, suffered in silence, but at the end when I looked at it and I was able to share, I was also able to gain more perspective on not just myself, but also the person I was with at that time, right? Forgiveness is also a big part of the unlearning phase. If you are not able to forgive, you are going to be holding on to pieces of the crumble phase that should be disposed of and put in the trash pile. This will be unnecessary anger. This could be rage. This could be you projecting your situation onto new situations and not allowing yourself to heal or to give that person the benefit of the doubt to do what they want to do. I have a past episode of the podcast um, all about forgiveness that I will link in the show notes and you should also go and have a listen to. Forgiveness sometimes feels like we're doing it for the other people, but I think it's one of the most selfish acts that we can take. And it's selfish in the most delicious way because we do it all for ourselves. It's self-indulgent, but every single person around us who we love and care for will benefit from it as well. So it's the type of selfishness where, yes, you should be selfish because everyone around you is going to enjoy you more from that place, right? In this unlearning phase, you're shaking off the things that don't serve you. You are loosening the grip on things that you may have been holding on to for a while unnecessarily. This is where you're really freeing yourself of whatever it is no longer serves you, as Marie Kondo would say. So I have four questions that you should ask during this unlearning phase. I think, I, yeah, I have four. I, I thought I added another one, but no, there are four questions that you should ask yourself during this phase. The first one is, what patterns do I notice about myself? And these patterns can be good or bad, but pay attention to the things that you have been doing. Like, pay attention to the fact that maybe in certain situations you you move a certain way and how that may affect your situation, um, how that may actually affect the experiences that you find yourself in, right? We need to notice our patterns because if we don't notice our patterns and the things we tend to do, we're not going to be able to either increase doing that or decrease doing that, right? More so the decrease part is more important. If you're if you have some good patterns and habits, they're going to continue as your default. But when you have patterns or habits that are not serving you, the, the sooner that you realize that these things are prevailing in your life and the sooner you're able to acknowledge and call them out for what they are. Every single time they happen thereafter, you'll be able to quickly like check yourself because you already know what's going on. You see it and you you've been able to acknowledge it for what it is. Right. Another question is, what insecurities do I have and what triggers them? Our insecurities, some of them have been with us our whole lives and we don't even realize. They're, they're kind of like the patterns, right? But our insecurities, when, they, when we come up against them or when our internal nervous system feels them, it can literally have us reacting in ways that we never knew were a part of our lives or we wouldn't even understand the control in which they have over us and the decisions that we make. I hate being yelled at or I hate feeling like somebody is angry at me. 
so much so that if I know that I do, I've done something to someone that may make them upset with me and they might want to have an uncomfortable conversation in the past, I would just avoid that person. I would avoid them so much that I would end up not even speaking to them. I know I've done like crazy stuff where um, someone would text me and when they texted me, I'd forget to reply. And because I forgot to reply within a day or two, I would then get nervous. So I wouldn't end up replying for like a month and then it would be their birthday and I would be scared to um, wish them happy birthday. So I wouldn't. And then I would pretty much destroy a whole relationship because of this insecurity I had around being able to admit my wrongs and the consequences that could come thereafter. Right. So figure out what triggers these insecurities of yours. I know that avoidance triggers my irrational fear that I'm going to have a hard conversation with someone. So even I like to deal with that avoidance right away. So I don't end up in a situation where I'm going to, I'm going to prolong this conversation. And the more I prolong it, the more things they're probably going to be angry at me about, right? Like I go from not replying to text right away to ignoring for someone for, for five months to literally not acknowledging their birthday to not messaging or reaching out to them for care because I, I don't want to have this conversation. But yet, if I had just dealt with it at step one and sent a, Hey, I'm sorry for the late reply. I opened it while I was busy and I, I haven't been able to get back to it. That would be a much lighter conversation than I haven't heard from you in six months. You ignored me. You saw that I needed support and you didn't support me all because of avoidance. So now I know what triggers me and I nip it in the bud before it blows up. So you should try and do that as well, right? Like figure out what your insecurities are, what triggers them, so that the moment that trigger comes into place, you don't become a passive passive participant of your fears and insecurities. You can like take them by the reins and control them however you see fit. The next question is what defense mechanism is necessary was necessary in that season of my life and how could it be detrimental to my current and future positions? So there are things that we do in the midst of situations that just seem very necessary. And let me not just say seem, they may also just be very necessary within those situations. But if you take that defense mechanism and you bring it into another situation where it isn't the most ideal line of action, you can actually be setting yourself up for failure, right? Like things that hold in one season of our life don't necessarily hold in others. So when you're packing through the rubble, when you're looking through and you're deciding what you want to keep and take away, there might be some things that are a little bit tricky, right? Um, personal example, I know that for me, it was, I spoke about this in our last episode, but it was minimizing and not speaking up about what was hurting me. And in my relationship, I know that I did this a lot because when I would express my insecurities and what made me feel uncomfortable and how I wasn't feeling cared for or seen, they would be dismissed and minimized. And because I'm, I wasn't really someone who spoke about my feelings, if I did muster up the courage to speak about it and it was minimized, chances are I just wouldn't talk about it again. It would be too painful to have that rejection on something that I barely even wanted to talk about for me to continue to perpetuate that pattern. So I just wouldn't do it, right? And what? so I became a person who just was always like, I'm good, I have no issues, I'm not sad, I'm not upset. And when I left that relationship, I was tempted to take this behavior, this defense mechanism into my other relationships. But I realized that if I did, one, if I never told somebody how I felt about what they were doing to me, they would never be able to do better. And then two, I would resent somebody over not doing better about information that they didn't even know they needed to do better with, right? So I was setting not only myself up for perpetual disappointment, but also that person, I was setting them up for failure because they were losing in a game that they didn't even know they were playing, right? So that defense mechanism was one that, I understood would be completely detrimental if I moved it beyond the situation that I was in. And it was one of those things that although it was comfortable and it kept me feeling safe, it kept me feeling comfortable as much as is possible when you're not being satisfied within my past relationship. It was something that I needed to trash. I could not take that with me because the way that it served in a situation that was built on broken foundations, 
it would break the foundation of a relationship that probably wasn't broken if I took it forward with me. The final question is, what mentalities did I inherit based on my circumstances that are not truth? So when we are in situations, when we're growing up, there are mentalities that we inherit. We inherit these through our experiences. We inherit these through the people who we love and care about. We inherit these through media, right? And some of these mentalities, we have them sticking around so long that we think that they are the truth instead of them just being something that we've heard that we've absorbed as the truth. And when we're healing and moving out of the crumble phase, we will notice that part of the unlearning is the fact that there are some mentalities that held so true in that situation that will not hold true outside, right? So just going back to the defense mechanism one, a mentality that that really brought about was that I am the only one who cares about my feelings. I am the only person responsible for making sure that I feel happy, loved, safe, and secure Because if I let anybody else in to try and do that, they will let me down. And that mentality could literally take me to a place where I become an island of my own by my own doing. And then I feel isolated on this island that I literally created for myself. So it's one of those situations where you need to really unlearn some things. You need to say, this was a voice in my head during this season of my life. And that voice was not my own. It wasn't coming from my soul. It wasn't a voice that I want to continue. So I need to trash this voice and get it out, right? So this stage, this unlearning stage is where you're really just sifting through the rubble, right? If you want to rebuild better, not every single thing that happened that's in the crumble is trash, right? It's just like when people are building those houses or they're doing like a full reno, but then they say, oh, we kept some pieces from the old house, like, and we restored it and made it better and we're we're using it in this new house, right? And like, I don't know if you guys watch like those house building or house renovation shows, but they really make it a point to say, oh, this was a piece of a block of wood from the old house that we've turned into a dining table in the new house. And everybody's like gasping and in awe and happy about it. But that's how- Like, this is not a time to think that every single thing is lost because not everything is lost. There is so much good that will come out of those spaces if you just give yourself the time and the opportunity to sift through, trash whatever needs to be trashed, burn it if you need to burn it, but also take the parts of it that are necessary. So next week we'll be taking these pieces and moving on to the next phase of the healing process. So I want you to please share this episode, share this series with whoever you think will benefit from it. Healing is something that we all need to do at one point or another. So let's share the information. Let's share the wealth. Thank you so, so, so much for listening. Have an amazing week and I'll talk to you next Wednesday. Bye.